What's up, everybody? Today we got a, another awesome MCAT question, um, and this too is inspired by a paper, but I think it's actually relatively simple compared to the paper, and so let's go into it. It says, under moments of stress, uh, a guanine residue in DNA shown on the left, so this is guanine right here, it can be converted to 8-oxoguanine, shown on the right. So 8-oxoguanine is right down here. Okay, uh, and basically the question is asking you what sort of reaction is this? And you have five answer choices. Again, the MCAT will probably have four. I give five just because I want to make my questions um, more challenging. Because <laughs> what fun is it is if it's simple? So, um, the point of these five reactions is that these are all, are all reactions you should know for the MCAT. Okay, um, I think we've already had a question before on dehydration, but you know, there are other questions like hydrolysis and oxidation and reduction that you all should know for the MCAT. So with that, let's get straight into it. Um, so what are each of these reactions? So we're going to go through them one by one. The first one is hydrolysis. And so what is hydrolysis? Well, hydrolysis, as you can tell by my annotations about midway through the screen, hydro means water, right? And lysis or lysis <laughs> means break apart. So hydrolysis reactions are literally using water to break apart big molecules into small molecules. So you'll see that in hydrolysis reactions, you have to go from big to small, okay? And in hydrolysis reactions, as this image on the, I guess like the right corner of the screen shows, you'll start with maybe four, four monomers linked together, but then when you have water being added in, you can break those monomers apart into three and one. So this is known as a hydrolysis reaction. Similarly, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see another example of a hydrolysis reaction. This one is actually real life. Um, you'll see that maltose, which is a disaccharide, right? This maltose can be broken down into two molecules of glucose with just one water molecule because the water molecule goes in and breaks that bond. So you'll see that for a hydrolysis reaction, you need to have water and you also need to have um, breakdown of something. So does this apply to our reaction? If you look at our reaction at the top of the screen, we actually see, first of all, there's no water involved, right? Um, so that's, that's already a bad sign. Similarly, we also see no breakdown, right? No breakdown. And that means that there's no breakdown, and therefore, this does not apply to our reaction. The reaction being shown here is not a hydrolysis reaction. Similarly, Next up on our list is a dehydration reaction. We've already talked about this before. And so if you haven't seen that already, feel free to check out the dehydration video, um, which I will hopefully be able to link somewhere. Uh, maybe it'll probably just be in the description below, but make sure you check it out. But basically dehydration means, D means remove, right? D is like remove, desegregate, remove segregation. So dehydrate means remove water. And in the process of removing water, you create a new bond. So that is basically what dehydration reactions do. If you look again at the lower left corner, you'll see that in dehydration, you'll take a water out, right? And in the process, you combine um, a polymer of three with one to make a polymer of four. So that is dehydration. You're taking water out to make a bond. Um, similarly, here too, you'll see that there are two monosaccharides. These two monosaccharides will take a water out, right? These, these OH and H will make a water to make a bond in the middle. And that bond will now make a um, bigger molecule. So does this apply to our reaction? Does, it, does the process of dehydration apply to this reaction? And if I'm hoping you'll say no because there's no water involved here. First of all, you're not taking any water out. Second of all, you're not making the molecule bigger, right? Or I guess another way of saying that is you're not making a bond. You're not making any new bonds here. I guess technically you are. You are making a new bond with the oxygen, but you're not making a new bond in the sense of like you're not adding on a new monomer, right? So for that reason, this is not a dehydration reaction because there's no, first of all, there's no water. That's the biggest thing. Second of all, there's no bond that's actually made. All right, so with that, um, we can now move forward. What sort of reaction is this? So the last two answer choices were oxidation and reduction. And if you know anything about redox reactions, which is both of these, these are both redox reactions, 
you need to think about them together. And so that's why I have them written out. So redox reactions are caused by a loss of electrons. Or I mean, ox redox reactions... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So redox reactions involve oxidation and reduction. So let's talk about oxidation first. Oxidation reactions are caused by loss of electrons. And, you know, oxidation reactions are a subset of redox reactions. And the loss of electrons can be difficult. So if you lose electrons, the electron loss can be difficult to see on paper, right? So in this reaction, when this molecule is converted into this molecule, it might be difficult for you to see where the electrons are. But there are guides, and I'm going to go over them. I'm going to go over them in the next slide. Similarly, re reduction reactions are caused by a gain of electrons. So reduction reactions are also redox reactions, right? They are also redox reactions, but they're caused by a gain of electrons. And similarly, the electron gain, like when you gain electrons, it can be difficult to see where they are on paper, right? When you're going from A to B, it might be difficult for you to see electron movement. Electron movement is hard to see, but there are guides. So I will tell you what those guides are right here. Right away, this is exactly what we just talked about. This left-hand corner, upper left-hand corner, is what we just talked about. But this chart is what you should memorize. You should memorize this chart from the MCAT. Yeah. Memorize. Okay? And why should you memorize it? You should memorize it because it's something that absolutely you will need to know. Okay? And the reason why you'll need to know it is because this gives you a better way of seeing what an oxidation and reduction reaction is. An oxidation reaction, if you involve a gain in oxygen, if you go from A to B and you gain an oxygen, that means you've gone through an oxidation reaction. Or if you lose a hydrogen, that's another way to signify an oxidation reaction. And last but not least, if you lose electrons, that's another way to signify uh, an oxidation reaction. Similarly, redu reduction reactions are indicated by a loss of oxygen, or a gain in hydrogen, or a gain of electrons. So let's talk about this reaction in the lower left-hand corner, which is our reaction of interest. In this reaction, what's happening? In this reaction, we are gaining an oxygen, right? We are gaining an oxygen. The reactants don't have an oxygen that the product does. And if you gain and oxygen, that's a signal of an oxidation reaction, right? You explicitly gained an oxygen, and therefore that's a signal of an oxidation reaction. However, now, if we move forward, we can actually answer this question because we can see that the main difference between this molecule and this molecule is an explicit gain in oxygen. And because we gain in oxygen here, this is an oxidation reaction. And so the answer here is C. All right. And so if you guys have any questions about this, let me know. But this is the best answer. There's another way to explain it. I hope to show you that later on. But yes, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And let me know if you have any questions. See you in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. You want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here, another link to one of my videos right here, and another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down, but a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.